Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome to Let's Play Warcraft 3. This is, for so many reasons, my favorite game of all time. And starting today, we're going to explore one of those reasons, which is the single player campaign. Now, that being said, we are going to start with the human campaign once we make our profile. And not the prologue, which is the exodus of the Horde. Uh, we're not starting with the Exodus of the Horde. I'll insert the opening cutscene for it here. We never paid any heed to the ancient prophecies. Like fools, we clung to the old hatreds. And fought as we had for generations. We stand now upon the brink of destruction, for the reign of chaos has come at last. The sands of time have run out, son of Duratan. The cries of war echo upon the winds. The remnants of the past scar the land. Once again, by conflict. Heroes arise to challenge fate and lead their brethren to battle. As mortal armies rush blindly towards their doom, the burning shadow comes to consume us all. Rally the Horde. 
and lead your people to their destinies. Seek me out. Now that's all the setup that we really need for this. Uh, we'll play as the orcs later and revisit some of that, but the additional context that we would get from the prologue is that Green Jesus Thrall needs to lead his people across the sea because something evil is coming. That theme is going to reemerge later anyway. The reason that we aren't playing the prologue is simply because it's just a tutorial with a little bonus context. And it's a long, boring tutorial at that. It's valuable if you're playing on your own, but I think I can get us off on a better foot. So let's start with the human campaign, act one of the game proper, The Scourge of Lordaeron. enough. Agreed. The Horde is on the move. This is absurd. My nation will not stand by and watch as the Horde masses on our very doorstep. The Orcs are not our primary concern here. How many times must I repeat myself? King Terranus, you must heed my warning. This plague that has gripped the Northlands could have dire ramifications. Let's keep all this in perspective. Even if this plague does pose a threat to us, what are you proposing that we do? It is simple. As I have said, the Kirin Tor are already prepared to place the villages under strict quarantine. I will not institute quarantine without proof of your claims, Ambassador. The people of Lordaeron have suffered enough without becoming prisoners in their own lands. Yet, prisoners they are, good king. What is the meaning of this? Who are you? Humanity is in peril. The tides of darkness have come again, and the whole world is poised upon the brink of war. Enough of this. Guards, remove this madman. Hear me. The only hope for your people is to travel west, to the forgotten lands of Kalimdra. Old Ambassador, I don't know who you are or what you believe, but this is not the time for rambling prophets. Our lands are beset by conflict, but it shall be we who decide how best to protect our people, not you. Now, be gone! I failed humanity once before, and I will not do so again. If you cannot take up this cup, then I shall find another who will. A warning has been given. Their fate is now their own. Recent orc uprisings in southern Lordaeron have forced the Alliance to take decisive measures. To contain the orcish threat, King Terranus has sent two of the realm's greatest paladins, his son Prince Arthas and the legendary Uther the Lightbringer, to deal with the orcs once and for all. Thus starts Chapter 1, The Defense of Strombrad. Welcome, Prince Arthas. The men and I are honored by your presence. 
Can the formalities, Uther. I'm not king yet. It's good to see you. You too, lad. I'm pleased that King Terran has sent you to help me. Father still hopes your patience and experience might rub off on me. It is a father's right to dream, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Look, here's where we stand. Our scouts have confirmed that there is an orc encampment hidden somewhere over the next ridge. As I suspected. It gets worse. They're preparing to attack the nearby village of Strongbrad. As far as we know, the village is completely defenseless. I need to move against the orcs' base immediately. Can you handle Strongbrad's defense on your own? Of course, Uther. Don't worry about me. Good. Meet me at the orc camp once you've saved the village. Be careful, Arthas. All right, cool. Uh, I didn't mention this before, but I am incredibly nervous. The most nervous I've been doing an LP in a long time because I've never LP'd an RTS before. And I desperately hope I can do justice to my all-time favorite game while also tackling a genre that I don't know is that LP friendly. Help! Bandits are stealing our belongings! So up ahead at the bridge... We're going to come across a bandit ambush, drive them away, and start our first optional quest before we even get really into the meat of the main quest. Certainly. Those bandits stole my ledger. Without it, I will lose my entire farm. Please, retrieve it from their camp. It would mean so much to us. All right, so we're going to raid a bandit encampment, get the ledger back, and uh, get some sweet rewards. So Blizzard has a pedigree for making the best campaigns for RTS games, uh, and they spent a lot of time cutting their teeth with StarCraft and Brood War and Warcraft 1 and 2, along with shamelessly aping and iterating on the successes of their competitors like Command & Conquer and kind of polishing other people's ideas. That's something that they've always done incredibly well, actually, is import from others and perfect. Uh, and they honed this craft until they, in my opinion, perfected it here with Warcraft 3. This is, I think, the seminal RTS campaign. Unlike StarCraft before it, Warcraft 3's story is told from four perspectives. Uh, humans, undead, orcs, and night elves. They make up the four playable races of the game and the four acts of the overarching campaign. Uh, there is my dude's ledger. We're going to break this because sometimes some of these neutral uh, camp buildings can contain goodies. I'm not going to spend the whole playthrough going through and picking these apart one by one. Just kind of move on here. And uh, we'll get back to... What's his face? One of his ledger. Oh, I spent... Spend so little of, of my attention Thank on the townsfolk. Please take this item. I'm not actually Damn. even sure what that was. That may have been a scroll of healing a or some kind of tome of experience. Uh, so, of this being a real-time strategy game, this is all about troop done. management and resource oh, management. Brothers. Right now, the resources aren't so heavily emphasized. Dang. We will get Just eased jump. into that. Uh, for now, all we really need to focus on is controlling our four footmen and our hero, Arthas. Now, when I say the hero, Arthas, I'm not only talking about him as a protagonist, he's also a literal hero in the context of the game. Uh, that's the type of unit that he is. He is a hero unit. This was a new thing for Blizzard RTSs. Unique, larger-than-life units that gain experience, that can allocate skill points, stuff like that. They have inventory slots so you can equip them. Uh, we have a potion of mana we got earlier. We had that tome in our inventory. They are like these on the battlefield commanders that you are in control of. It's this really cool dynamic that at the time was totally unique. Uh, and in Reign of Chaos, each of the four races have three heroes. So humans have three heroes, undead have three heroes, uh, so on. With the expansion, the Frozen Throne will be playing later. Uh, they added an additional one for each race. 
and the heroes in this game happen to be major players in the story, so it works out like that. Uh, we start off with Arthas, who is a paladin-type hero. And he gets Holy Light at the beginning, which can heal one friendly unit, or damage an undead. Uh, there's a blue glow under all of my units now after the bandit fight, because I leveled up. And I put a point in Devotion Aura, which gives them extra armor. It mitigates physical damage that they take from other units. Certainly. For honor. Is there danger? All these wretches off with the rest of them. Move them out! Uh, now we kind of get into the climax of this mission with the Orc uh, Slaver. By the way, I'm going to be going through all of the nitty gritty of what's going on, what you're seeing, what all of the numbers and all of these interface things are. I'm going to try to be as exhaustive as possible. Like, But like, remember back when I did the Demon Souls LP, what I tried to do is go slowly, take it slow. Uh, if you have questions, feel free to ask. I will... Again, try to be exhaustive. I'll try to cover things in the comments. But we want to spread this out over time. I'm going to try not to be too overwhelming with what all of this is. Uh, the main thing that you just want to pay attention to is, for now, health bars, really. Uh, and how I'm kind of managing my troops to preserve their health. Not only healing them with Holy Light, but also kind of dragging them back when they are being focus-fired so that the enemy AI will focus on something else and I preserve their health totals a little bit better. Don't worry, son. We'll find them and bring them home safe. Prince Arthas, Lord Uther needs you at the Orphan Cabinet immediately. Never a dull moment. Let's get moving. Uh, the score string here that you get after missions, that really does not contain too much useful information. So 20 minutes later, at Uther's encampment near the Black Rock Clan village. Ah, uh, good timing, lad. I sent two of my best knights into parley with the orc leader. They should be returning shortly. Orcs will never surrender. Then let's get in there and destroy the beasts. Remember, Arthas, we are paladins. Vengeance cannot be a part of what we must do. If we allow our passions to turn to bloodlust, we will become as vile as the orcs. Yes, Uther. <laughs> uh, if you're feeling up to it, I want you to lead the attack. Me? Well, of course. I'll remain here and ensure that none of the loathsome beasts threaten the camp. I won't fail you. I know you won't, lad. Is there danger? Alright, so Uther is going to remain behind. We have full control of Arthas. Our team color is blue. That's how we can differentiate from Arthas, More who we can control, uh, and Uther, who we cannot. He'll just stay behind and kind of protect what things, hold down the fort, uh, as he said. Now we get introduced to the other major aspect of the game, which is the resource management and the base building. Uh, so we start this time with a town hall, a couple of peasants, and uh, a constructed lumber mill and a gold mine. The major resources of this game are gold, lumber, and food. Have you come to join in our hunt? What are you dwarves hunting in this region? We are hunting black drakes. It's said that Drake's blood can bestow fiery enchantments upon weapons. The fiery enchantments you seek could prove useful. The name of the beast we're hunting is Cyrenox. With your aid, the monster won't stand a chance. So we're going to take these four riflemen that we've now recruited because we went out on the map and found them. And we are going to send them down to take care of an optional objective while we build a base back at home. Uh, so you can see your resources, the gold, the lumber, and the food, in the uh, top right. 
they are to the right of that wheel with the uh, the sun and the moon, which is the day and night cycle. We'll get more into that later on. Uh, for now, the main things that we want to focus on, oop, we may actually need to help Uther out. I, I'm not sure if he can hold this down. On our town hall, we have a button called Call to Arms that will turn our peasants, who are our main resource gatherers and builders, uh, into militia men or Minutemen, and they can kind of, to an extent, hold the fort down on their own while we are out here creeping. So, like I said, the peasants, they can uh, gather gold from the gold mine. They You can assign them to harvest lumber from the trees by rallying them from the town hall to the trees, uh, and then we'll return the lumber to the lumber mill. And you can get them to build your production facilities like barracks to train more footmen and riflemen, as well as farms to increase the maximum number of units you can have. Uh, they have staved off the orc threat, that threaten the base, uh, we can now return them to work. A couple of them were too far away to get the command from the town hall, that's fine. Of course. And in the meantime, we are multitasking. We have the heart that the riflemen are talking about, the heart of Cyranox, which can turn into a passive item for Arthas, and we've been producing stuff back at home. Uh, we have a barracks finished, and we can train riflemen from them. Uh, and riflemen and footmen. Footmen cost only gold, and they cost a few food, which is your max supply. Uh, so you build farms to supply them with food, which means you can, in turn, build a bigger army. Now I will reforge our weapons to strike with searing heat. It costs both gold and lumber to train riflemen. Uh, riflemen being ranged units, and we've already seen footmen. Our main goal is to train six footmen, and then something else will happen. And while we were working on getting the production up and running for that goal, uh, we got the Heart of Cyrenox, like I said, and once we finish that quest, we now have an Orb of Flame on Arthas, which will do some uh, passive fire damage to anything that he hits now. So it's just a nice passive buff. And in the meantime, this one little footman is holding down the fort along with Uther just by himself. Uther will occasionally uh, cast Holy Light on my stuff, so that's nice. We'll heal that that uh, peasant up. I love the peasants so much in their voice lines. Yes, me lord. Work, work. Uh, and now we're nice and secure. Uh, so you heard me say something earlier about sending Arthas and the riflemen out to creep. Now you might not be familiar with the language of RTSs, but you might be familiar with MOBAs, and that term will be familiar if you are. Uh, basically, it's going out and hunting down neutral monsters littered around the map. Uh, killing them will confer a lot of XP and a lot of gold, which bolsters the economy, gives you kind of a shot in the arm. 26 from that knoll. Uh, and it's nice, because each peasant returns 10 gold at a time from the mine to the town hall. So just getting this burst of, of 26, 30 at a time, that's really helpful. It's a nice shot in the arm for the economy. Of course. So it confers both gold and XP. Again, useful because the XP carries across the entire campaign for Arthas. Gives him more skill points, levels his stats up, makes him hit harder, all that good stuff. Gives him more mana to cast Holy Lights with. And you can also get uh, some item drops from them. It's one of the ways we got uh, some of these mana potions. And because Warcraft 3 added these RPG-esque heroes, creeping became really important in Warcraft 3. It's an aspect of the metagame that was really introduced and never existed pr uh, with any prior RTS. Uh, we have a pretty efficient mining operation going on. Uh, back here, we have all the lumber we really need. And we've now met our objective requirement. We've established a base and trained a bunch of footmen. Paladin fool! The warlocks of the Black Rock Clan have spoken. Soon, demons will rain from the sky, and this wretched world will burn. Yes, I've heard this rhetoric before. You orcs will never learn. It was only a mirror image. Damn it. What are these curs up to? The 
the hour of doom approaches, let this paltry sacrifice appease our demon masters. You sick bastards. Never get away with me. Slay the orcs. Slay them all! And because we did that quest while we built our footmen army up, we also get to go into this battle with a bunch of riflemen. Uh, so an even more heavily supplemented force to fight all this stuff off with. Uh, and then if we micro all of this correctly and we keep producing, we keep macroing back at home, uh, we will have a very large army to fight this enemy hero with. Uh, and that is our first enemy hero as well, by the way, uh, an orc hero called a Blade Master. And we even got an introduction to one of his abilities, which is Mirror Image, which allows him to split into clones. Uh, I yes, me lord. Oh, we need farms back at home. I'm here to help. Uh, we are almost at that supply cap. And in the meantime, look at him just melt. Uh, I think Uther can at least hold it down while we finish this up, because the quest will end as soon as we kill the Blade Master. Yeah, look how substantial this army is just because of the order that we tackled things in. You've done well, lad. This was a sound victory. I don't know, Uther. The orcs were sacrificing townsfolk. I think they were trying to summon demons. Have faith, lad. These orcs are trying to hold on to dying traditions. We defeated their demons a long time ago. Let's head for home. It's been a long day. Two weeks later in the Violet Gardens of Dalaran, this is an intermission. You must be wiser than the king. The end is near. I told you before, I'm not interested in this nonsense. And I've wasted my time here. You can show yourself now, Jenna. He's gone. I'm sorry for eavesdropping, Master, but... <laughs> it's your inquisitive nature that I've come to rely on, child. That crazed fool's convinced that the world is about to end. I've heard the rumors of the plague spreading throughout the Northlands. Do you truly believe that the plague is magical in nature? It's a strong possibility. That's why I need you to travel there and investigate the matter. I've arranged for a special envoy to assist you. Yes, Master. I'll do my best. I know you will, child. Three days later in the Alterac Mountains, Arthas and his men, sorry, in Alterac, Arthas and his men wait near a crossroads along the King's Road. So I think that is a good place to stop for today. Thank you all for watching. Take it easy. Have a good one.